And so one finds oneself in this knowledge economy uh, sort of measuring oneself by how one's doing in sort of reputational rankings or, or rankings based upon uh, scholarly output. A key thing in the area of scholarly output is the social science uh, citation index, uh, at least in, in, in the, uh, for the social sciences, but they also for other areas as well. What the social science citation index does, it looks for uh, whose work gets cited in what they recognize as the key journals in the world. Um, let me say that again. The social science citation index identifies key journals in the world. I think it's run by Thomson, which is a major publishing company out of the UK. Uh, but they list, I think it's uh, in the social science area, it's about 233 journals. Um, but there's a bias to those journals. Uh, I think as you look down the list, uh, you'll only find a, a, a handful that are non-English non journals, so they're predominantly Western journals. And, um, and I think there's a handful of European, like German journals and some others among the 233. And there's a handful, I think there are around six of these 233 that uh, uh, publish uh, Asia Pacific, focus on Asia Pacific work. And so you, you've got to ask yourself, whoa, um, in this, what is this empire? Uh, couldn't, couldn't one sort of uh, say that, that, uh, uh, that what we've got here is a sort of a perpetuation of, of Western domination? Indeed, in the education area, if you look at some of these journals, it, it perpetuates itself in, in a variety of ways. Um, a journal that I've spent a lot of time looking at is the American Education Research Journal, which is, uh, in many people's eyes, the leading educational research journal in the world. And looking to sort of see to what extent they are inclusive of, of international research. And particularly, um, uh, I'm very interested in uh, whether or not they include uh, Ch mainland Chinese research. As I look at that journal, I'm interested in the fact that the, most of their institutional subscriptions are not Western. They're from Asia and, and the Africans. So you would think, well, okay, uh, a major part of their subscriptions is, is, is global, and, and not European, um, uh, not American. And then I look to see the editorial boards, and I see, wow, in the editorial boards, which might be a fairly extensive, let's say, uh, oh, uh, 30 or 40 people sometimes, it's rare to find an editor from any place other than the Americas or Europe. And so there's this, what would be called uh, both a Western and Northern Hemisphere bias. Because um, if I was uh, a, a Chinese uh, researcher and I open up the editorial board to see if I can see any uh, f uh, people who might work at uh, a university within China um, or mainland China, I wouldn't see it. And then as I've looked at these journals more closely, um, one finds oneself uh, realizing that, wow, um, the knowledge economy in terms of at least these proxies, these two proxies, is con controlled by Western int interests. In my examination of American Educational Research Journal, for example, um, and looking at four years and probably looking through, oh, it must be, uh, I don't know, if, um, several thousand citations, I could not find one citation of a Chinese scholar. Now, whoa. Uh, here we have social science citation index, where we've got just a few journals in English that focus on Asia Pacific. And then we have the, le the leading journals uh, with editorial board and obviously reviewers. Uh, with articles that aren't focused on um, on any other country, it's a very parochial um, and a mix of I don't know a combination of uh, arrogance or ignorance. 
but one can start to sort of see, hey, in terms of the global development, some of the issues that, that one needs to look at. Now, uh, one could sort of sit back and sort of speculate that this, these sort of biases exist, and several people have done that in, in writing about globalization. But one can go below, beyond that and actually look closely at, at these journals in the Social Science Citation Index and actually see uh, what one would consider to be empirical evidence that what we've got here is a, 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 almost a, a form of exclusion which perpetu perpetuates a sort of a colonization of epistemologies. And here we have a country like China that has one of the longest tradi intellectual traditions in the world uh, being encouraged to be a participate, participant in a global economy where to play the game, they, they have to uh, assume that they've, they've got to play it on what I think are Western terms. I'd like to take a close look at, at, at how these global issues play out, for example, in China uh, by focusing on, in, on one institution in China and, and what they've been pursuing as some of their goals.